episode of the Book Fix Podcast, where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. Today, we're saving one man, and his name is Zach Book Talk, and we're saving him. This is the we one are. we're saving in this episode. Okay. Yeah. We're saving a, a, a man? I'm throwing in my, my book raft. Yes. <laughs> my a raft, raft made of just, books? Just copies of, of After by Anna Todd. <laughs> Don't worry. They're very thick. They're very buoyant. It'll it'll stick. And we're going to save Mr. Zach Book Talk. Okay, but why are we saving Zach? See, you and I haven't really been on TikTok much, <laughs> but I know that you kind of saw a glimpse of this, but I have no idea what you're talking about, so you're going to have to explain to all of us what happened. Honestly, dude, like I'm still kind of confused because from what it seems, Mr. Zach Book Talk he made a post about um, his mm-hmm. June TBR and about what he was going to read. And he got hella like views, like hella following, subscribers, a lot of good comments, okay, like can, good engagement can with you, the post. Can you pause for a second here? I don't yes. know what else you're going to say, but I just want to bring up that I think it's a little unfair that anytime a guy like comes out and just shows that he reads oh my god i feel like all a guy has to do is show a book and everyone's like oh my god a man reads and they'll just their engagement is insane i think that's what the issue is like people are mad that like oh you're doing the bare minimum and you got a lot of engagement and here's all these women Uh book talkers or Uh you know uh, queer book talkers everyone who is trying their hardest and we're not getting views like, that's all you mm. had to do and you got views. And mm. people are getting really, like, upset about it. But at the same time, because I feel a certain way about this. I feel like yeah. Zach Book Talk, we do have to be kinder to him because it's like he does read from what it seems like. Like, uh-huh. he is a reader. So I don't think he should be getting all this hate. It's more of the fault of TikTok's algorithm mm-hmm. and how much they fail everyone time and yeah. time again. No, I definitely agree with you. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's his fault either. It's just unfortunate that that's the way that it happens. Um, Obviously, like, if you want to support more women who also do the same thing, who review books, there's plenty out there. Um, Yeah, you can even check the book fix at T H E B O O K F I X on TikTok. Where it's two women. Two women. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I just. I, I'm glad that he is reading the book, though, because it would be unfortunate if he would just come out and be like, yeah, this is what I want to read. And then he won't read it. I do. I do remember there were points in um, this is such a weird thing to bring up um, back then when YouTube was getting very big with reactors mm-hmm. and K-pop react was really huge. Oh, my there God. Like Don't this... even remind me. OK, but th- do you remember there was a small moment of time? Where people used to fake reactions, like they would time when they would react and what name they would say, but they actually knew nothing about K-pop. No way. But do you remember? I don't remember their name. And even if I did, I wouldn't say it. But do you remember that time where a guy reacted to a BTS video? I think it was Blood, Sweat and Tears. I'm pretty sure. And literally, he was like pretending like it was his first time listening to it, but he messed up. And at one point, he accidentally like... I think he said the line that was going to come out or he like mouthed it or something. And everyone was like, oh, my God. And that's when like people were being outed for faking their reactions. I remember that so clearly. I I remember that being a thing. And the thing is, I don't think that's so far from TikTok right now. I'm not saying it specifically about Zach Book Talk, but you're right. I think men know that if they look a certain way and they have something, they will get views. Yeah, like they will if they are holding a book, you are going to get views, and it's such mm-hmm. a sad reality because like there are some women that put so much work into their videos, but because they are women and they're reading books, it's not going to really push them. Mm-hmm. Mostly yeah. for people of color. Like, oh yeah, it doesn't Especially. push that um, in the algorithm, and that's why people hate fucking TikTok so much. Because how are you supposed to grow in a place that won't even allow you to grow? Mm-hmm. But yeah then zach book talk over here getting a lot of views and yeah and, and i think it's it's, a, it's important to say that we're not like blaming that creator or any other creator really i it's, love it's, zach it's book just talk. i would die for him yes okay well, i wouldn't <laughs> die for him but relax <laughs> relax he's a man 
<laughs> no, but I know what you mean. It's it's it really isn't the creator's fault. At the end of the day, it's just the algorithm that sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Do you think anyone has ever faked reading a book though? Um, oh, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure it's happened. Especially like okay. when a when a book is really popular. And you just want to, you know, you just want to get on the trend like really quickly, you know, so maybe you'll just read the synopsis and maybe watch like another review or something. I don't know. Like, I just I'm pretty sure it's happened. Like, there's no way it has never happened. Mm hmm. That's true. That's true. I wonder if someone's going to get outed. Like, no, you've never read Harry Potter. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my secret's out. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say Harry Potter? <laughs> like that's not I don't know. I don't know why that's the first thing that came in my mind. <laughs> I feel like that's something that people would brag about right now. Like, oh yeah, I've never read Harry Potter. Mm. Oh yeah, me? I don't Harry, know about you guys, liked... but No, Take yeah. I never liked Harry Harry, Ron and Hermione and their wacky adventures together. That's weird. <laughs> I would never. Okay? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Oh gosh. I um I'm excited about today's topic because we are talking about an anthology that Mm -hmm. was written by oh my gosh you know the name better than i do carmen maria machado i believe is her name the book is titled her body and other parties i didn't think this was going to be an anthology i picked it because the cover looked pretty out of the ones that you showed me oh really i thought it was Mm -hmm. interesting because it it mentioned that it was, you know, an anthology, of course, but also that it had like supernatural elements to it. So I was like, you know what? I'm down. I'm down. And I think that was definitely something that I really enjoyed from some of the stories in this book was that supernatural, mm-hmm. like unsettling feeling. Yep. I agree. And I'm excited to talk about this with you. I don't think we really have to give much of a summary because no. all the stories are different just to let you know though be, but because it is an anthology and it has a total of eight stories we're not going to talk about all of them we're just going to highlight a few of them but i do recommend that if you are into um unsettling stories mm-hmm. and what else would we say well this book is definitely this book's for me. Yeah, well, of course, but it's also for like feminism because it, mm-hmm. it, a lot of the topics are about women and how they're perceived in society. And it's just a conversation about that. So they, they, it is unsettling. There's some moments where I was like, oh, damn, mm-hmm. I'm a little spooked right it, now. It kind of <laughs> gave black mirror vibes didn't it? yeah which is so funny because we are also going to be talking about black mirror and um a while in the shower i was thinking like well i mean we can't really rate it as a whole we would have to rate it like between each story well the the two stories that we're for sure going to talk about yes i want to talk about um one of the last ones it's Mm -hmm. called real women have bodies okay I am still confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try my best to like kind of summarize it a bit. I think that these stories are the type of stories where you kind of have to like sit with it for a second and then also like maybe possibly if you can reread it because there are moments mm-hmm. where I was also really confused. Like I wasn't 100% sure about like what exactly was happening because a lot of the time they don't really like they don't give the main character a name. So it's yeah. like it's like nameless. Yes. It's just you. <laughs> it it does feel like that, doesn't it? Because I yeah. felt like I was there and it made me feel worse that I was there. <laughs> yeah, same. But- and so when because of the writing, it's also really difficult for me to sometimes keep track of who the characters are, what is happening. So it is a little bit confusing, but one of the stories, like Chelly said, is called Real Women Have Bodies. And in this story, something is going on. I think they deem it as like a plague, but they're not really sure. They they have theories of what's going on. And they're blaming like things that are very, <laughs> I would say unrelated, but really there's no 
reasoning here. Um, so slowly women are turning transparent, almost like ghost-like. And so nobody knows what is happening, why it's happening. And it doesn't happen to everyone. Like there's no like certain age or certain point or certain trigger. It just kind of happens. And mm-hmm. the main character is working for, I believe it's like a clothing store. And she's just like miserable. And well, she's miserable and she's working at this clothing store and she becomes friends with um, someone who also works at the clothing store that makes her mom makes the clothing. Well, her it's, name is it's Petra. not. Yeah, it's not necessarily like right there. But yeah, it's the daughter of the seamstress of a seamstress. Yeah. And she starts a relationship with Petra and. This whole time, like, I mean, women are going transparent and I fucking, oh my God, there is this one part where the main character is with like boys. I don't even know who these boys are, but the guys are just, the guys are just talking about women. Like, so like whatever, you know, like they're just, they're just talking about their bodies and it's like, yeah, well. You know, the hips, like, you gotta have hips, you know? That's like drinking water without, like, a glass. Like, you can't have sex with them like that. And so Mm -hmm. even, it pisses me off that even in this world where women are going uh, fucking see-through, it's like people still make it seem like, oh, it's their fault. Like, there's something that they did. Like, they did something wrong. And I I hate how they start calling the, the main character Stone Girl, because she's not going, yep. to, well, she's not see through, I guess. But it's like she's not made out of stone; she's made out of flesh. Like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so then they the, also just kind of talk to her as like she's one of the guys, and it's like you guys have no respect for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I hate it so much. Yeah, every man in this story is disgusting. It's only those guys, I think. But it sucks too because. Our character is so full of emotion, but doesn't know mm-hmm. how to show it. And mm-hmm. it, it hurts when she gets in a relationship with Petra, because although it felt so good, it automatically just turns because Petra was like, I want to show you something. Mm-hmm. And she takes Petra to. Is it a motel? Mm, I think so. They go somewhere where the mom is at. Mm -hmm. And she is um, sewing these dresses on the women that faded away. Yeah. And it's so unsettling because it's like, don't these women, why why are they here? Like, why is there so many? It's like, they don't care. Like, they're okay with us doing this. And that's how they make their dresses. They fit it onto the women who are faded away. Mm-hmm. And it creeps out our main character so much that she leaves, but she still really loves or likes Petra at this point. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what? We're still going to try to continue this relationship. And it's okay for a bit until um, Petra starts to fade. Yeah. Well, Petra makes a comment one night where she's like, I can feel it. Like, I, I feel that I'm fading away. And I think even like, at some points she'll notice that her hand is going a little see-through or parts of her hand Mm -hmm. and so obviously they're both kind of freaking out over it and they're trying to make the most out of their relationship but she knows that eventually she's also going to be the same as the other women yeah it's so sad because there's nothing they can do and there are moments where like petra will go out on a walk And our main character will wake up and she'll be like, it already happened. And I missed it. It happened and I missed it. Yeah. And it's Oh, that was so sad because she like panicked. She full on panicked. She was like already crying. Mm hmm. So I I really valued their relationship. Mm -hmm. It was so weird. I don't know. It felt very out of nowhere when Petra and the main character were on the bed together. And Mm -hmm. Petra was like. Did you know that some women use this form to commit terrorism? And it was like, oh, my gosh. Like, that's such a. Yeah. Like, why would you? Okay. (laughs) Like, that's such a big thing to bring up. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's like 
it, it's interesting to hear them talk about it so nonchalantly when it's actually something that's affecting their world. Because in this whole story, it was never brought up like what would happen after with these women. But th- I guess it's so many of them that there are things like that happening in this world. Yeah. And they don't even really know whether or not they're still alive because there's a conversation that Mm -hmm. Petra and the main character have where it's like, well, are they dead? Are they still like conscious? Like they don't really know what is happening to them. And we never get an answer by the way, which I think makes it more unsettling. I think the last thing that we hear is the main character say like, if someone's incorporeal, I don't trust that they're alive. Like she, she makes that like, that's her assumption. Mm-hmm. And then that's like the last time they talk about it, I think. Yeah. So um, Petra does eventually become um, faded and it sucks because it's overnight. And I think our main characters like through her like at night and they're all ch- kind of like scrambling to get up. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's the end and our main character leaves Petra. Yeah. And she had quit the clothing job, but she went back to go double check something. And I don't get the ending. I think she's, I don't understand the ending either, but I think she's trying to set them free. No, like, isn't she telling them to leave or something? Like, I think she's like, it tearing, was like all the tearing their dress yeah. apart. No, because I remember it saying that she cut like the, the seams. I yeah. guess so, because at the end, all of these women that were faded and were being used by the seamstress, they just stayed there. Mm-hmm. So I think she was trying to set them free because but, I do remember her just saying that she just found their bodies and they were just there, mm-hmm. which really sucks because at the end they had no like will to survive or live because you're not even sure if they're alive. Yeah, <laughs> like that's the the thing is that you don't know what exactly they are anymore. Um, but I actually really liked this story. I thought it was very unsettling and especially, I think it's a good, well, I think they're all, most, a lot of these stories are good topics of how women's bodies are perceived, especially because the, even like the, especially with the guys who were still like, oh, you know, it's all about the hips. It's all about this. And it's like. You don't even fucking care that these women are literally like disappearing or or turning transparent, I should say. It's like that's not what matters to them. What matters is like, oh, make sure you still are able to feel them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because the person who left the most impact in the world Mm -hmm. of our main character wasn't even the people who are corporeal. It was Petra and she's not even corporeal. Like, she matters so much more than having a physical form Mm -hmm. to our main character. So it's just like, damn, you guys literally meant nothing to me and you're all trash. But Petra was everything to me. Mm -hmm. And then there was that one section as well. I think it was near the beginning where society wasn't sure what to put the blame on. And there was a part where they said, like, oh, they blame the fashion industry or they blame like something. It was like, I don't know, to me, it Whatever they blamed didn't make any sense to me. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, well, maybe they're blaming the fashion industry because it puts such like a like high expectations on what women should look like. Like, I don't know if it's a commentary on like how women should be perceived or should look or, you know, should carry themselves. Did you notice, too, how like at that part it was like, oh, but that blame didn't last long because how are we going to sell clothes to people? If, yeah if we were blamed yeah and then exactly they had made a comment that was like even if they don't have bodies we'll still figure out how to sell clothes to them mm-hmm. yeah and it's it's a scary thing to think of even like if petra is not dead she's just invisible and that's mm-hmm. scary like you exist in the world but you just can't be seen or heard but like you said it is kind of a commentary on how it is today it definitely, a hundred percent. It seems miserable, but then I'm wondering, like, is it, is it the opposite? Like, are do they have more freedom because they don't have to worry about what they should wear? You know what I mean? Well, who knows? Because that's that's what it's left with. Like, we don't know what what it's like, and I th- kind of like the idea of us not knowing, Same. like of us not knowing if this is good or bad because, like, 
who are we if we haven't experienced this and mm-hmm. it kind of pushes like the well you guys didn't care well not us but like the people in the story you guys didn't care enough to know so mm-hmm. you don't know yeah exactly but i i don't remember is this supposed to happen to every woman like at one point in their life i don't think so i think it just happens to some to some women and um but the thing is there's no you don't show symptoms Mm. so like how petra said you just kind of feel like when it's going to happen but no one really knows when it happens what age it just happens damn that seems so scary especially like uh, like just the title alone like real women have bodies Mm -hmm. like that just fucks me up because uh, i don't even want to get into it but the whole like it reminds me of that fucking video what what is a woman you know from that one guy it's fucking annoying did you ever watch that one no don't no. <laughs> he literally pisses me off because he's trying to just <sighs> he's definitely like the type to be like well if you're not biologically a woman then you're not a woman right so he's like goes around mm-hmm. and starts asking people like what is a woman and you know like i don't know and obviously that's a whole different discussion, but I do really like this title because obviously they're still women, even if they're yep. transparent. And to society, like women already have less value. So not having yep. a body, it's like, damn, like the value is just lowering. So that's mm-hmm. why I as I, we were talking about it. That's why I was like, well, does that make them more free then? Because now you can't, you know, force what you think is beautiful onto them because you know you can't even really see them damn dude that was it's it's different talking about it with you than just reading it Mm -hmm. (laughs) i know seriously i'm I'm happy to hear your input um can we talk about the second one yes i am so ready for the it's so funny because i thought we were gonna start with this one but um, i'm excited i was i wanted to i wanted to but um, I wanted to get uh, real women have bodies out of the way only because I think this is going to be the rest of our episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about eight bites. OK. Do you want to explain um, eight bites? Which is, yes. It's another short story in this anthology. And it has to do with a mother who she seems very unhappy. Mm-hmm. Like weight is such a big thing in this world that there is a surgery that her sisters and a lot of women go through Mm -hmm. where you basically get rid of very important internal organs. Well, it's a, it's a real surgery. They cut it's the, I think it's the one where they cut your stomach. Yes. And so, but they, yeah, but they, they get rid of a lot that is supposed to be in there. And Mm -hmm. the way that they describe it is like, after you do this surgery, you can never go back to the way you were eating before. Mm-hmm. Like this surgery lasts as long as you are willing to follow the diet, which the diet is eight bites. So yeah. when you when you're eating, you're only allowed to have eight bites and then you throw the rest away because eight is enough to fill your palate. Mm-hmm. So like that's the thing. And the mom in this story, she it's not that she has an issue with eating, but to her, she overeats like she she feels like she needs this surgery. Well, she kind of she, she definitely has like a like a bad relationship with food because her family, they've all had this surgery. Yeah, they've all had this yeah. surgery. And so she knows that her sisters all can only have eight bites. And so when she's eating, she like starts off like, OK, I'll, I'll also have eight bites. So she'll have eight bites. But then like five minutes later, she's like, let me have another eight bites. And then as she's and gonna, then by the end, she's like eating out of the bowl or eating out of the pot, I think it said. Yeah, so she's, like, she keeps, like, I guess she's, like, binging because she's trying to emulate this same diet that her sisters are forced to have because of the surgery. This is an actual surgery? Well, there is a real surgery where they cut your, they cut, like, part of your stomach out so you get full faster. Okay, I do know that one. I thought that, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. But I think but, they, I think they did um, say organs. Like I do remember them saying organs. So maybe they did like cut other stuff too. But uh, from what I remember from this was that they took out important organs. So it's like it shouldn't be possible for you to continue unless you follow their regimen. But it it was a very scary situation. But she 
came to terms with like you know what it, it'll make me look nicer it'll make me look thinner mm-hmm. and she's already set to get this surgery which her sister was like did you even tell your daughter cal that you were going to get the surgery mm-hmm. and she didn't and when she did tell her daughter her daughter was like are you serious like you're you're literally going to cut a piece of you out mm-hmm. and be okay with it yeah because her daughter her daughter knows that this is a bigger issue. Like you need to address what's happening psychologically in order to be okay with yourself mm-hmm. physically. And her daughter gets upset with her. There's even another phone call they have like way later when it's about to happen where she's like, are you having this surgery because you're unhappy with your body? Does that mean you're unhappy with my body? Because I look just like you. Like, is this what you expect out of me? Do you want me to get this too? Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy because the mom, instead of like reacting she hangs up because she like doesn't want to deal with it answer yeah and i'm like use oh that's so shitty that is so shitty of you to do to your daughter yeah yeah i know i feel like she didn't want to think about it that way to her she just wanted an easy solution and she thought that if she got this surgery she would just be happier and for a time, she was. Like, she was really happy with how she looked. Mm. She was showing off. She was getting compliments. Wait, but can can, can, we, just, story- can we just bring up how, like, uh, apathetic the doctor was when she was, like, cutting her or about to do the surgery? Like, I think the main character was just, like, talking too much or I don't know what she was saying. I forgot, but. Mm-hmm. The doctor was like, "Okay, well, if you don't know, if you don't stop, I'm, I'm gonna cut your tongue out too." It's like, damn, yes, <laughs> fuck, dude, I know. Oh my god! And then god, she dude. even mentioned but- like that she was gonna go on like a nice vacation, like she was telling another nurse, and it's like nobody fucking care, like nobody cares that she's like literally doing this to fit this like beauty mm-hmm. standard. Like it pisses me off. Yep. But it shows like how little it affects other people, but how it meant the world to her, mm-hmm. which is sad. It's sad that like, you know, she built up this day and it's just a regular day for everyone else. Yeah. Like nobody really cares. But let's talk about the weird aspect of this story. All of it's weird, <laughs> but there's something that's especially weird. Yeah. <laughs> which I read this at night and I literally had to turn on the lights because I got really freaked out. That's so um, funny. So... <laughs> I, I got I got freaked out too though. So when she finished her surgery, she said that she started hearing things at home. Mm-hmm. And it it sounded like someone was in there. And she was like, at first, she's like, maybe it's a rat. Okay, I need, you know, whatever. But then it got to the point where she kept going, like, I hear you. I hear you. I know you're there. Where are you? And mm-hmm. no, no one would answer. So she told her sisters, like, did that happen to you guys too? I feel like I'm hallucinating. But they're just like, oh, it was my joy. It yeah. was my joy walking around. Yeah. Oh, it was actually my shame. You know, my shame would hang out in the shadows. Oh, it was this. And it's like, okay, so there, there's something there. There's like an actual thing that's living in her house. Yeah. That is just now living with her. And I still don't understand why it's there. Um, well, the way that this thing was described was kind of like a scarecrow, no? That it was, like, stuffed with something? Yeah. I took it as it being, like, (laughs) this is so, uh, but I thought it was, like, herself, but, like, because this this thing didn't have bones, so I thought it was, like, just, like, her fat, you know? Yep. Because it didn't speak. It didn't even, I don't even know if it had eyes. Like, I don't remember, but it was just like kind of like there. And then, it, mm-hmm. and then also, there was a point when the main character starts fucking beating it. And so, I yeah. obviously, like, it's invoking like something in her that would cause violence. So that's why I thought, like, is it, is it like her fat? Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it has to be something like her former self. Like, it just. Maybe because I. I kind of assumed the same thing, but I thought it was fun. It was a functioning version of herself without bones mm-hmm. because of all the important organs that they took out. Mm. Like they couldn't just get rid of it. So that was enough organs to create another life. Oh, and now that thing just lives with her. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If it was like her organs. Yeah. I think you're right. That's what I assumed. But then it was weird because like, 
that whole concept of like you will be good on your diet as long as you continue to follow it strictly. Mm -hmm. But then near the end, she kind of let it go and then apologized to the figure and was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Yeah. And I don't understand that. I think the way that I took it. Oh, because so she beat this thing. It like left or went away or something, but it was still in the house, but it would never approach her again. Like she just knew that it was around. And it wasn't until like at the end when she was like, oh, I only made it until like 75 or whatever, when she saw it again. And that's that's when she said, like, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. To me, because she had already lived this long, maybe she had a realization of, oh, I, I just wasn't happy with myself. And it wasn't like it wasn't you or you know what I mean? Like you're you weren't the problem. Like and that's why she apologized. But like, really, she's apologizing to herself. Mm, That makes sense, because like overall, this whole story is just kind of talking about. Like weight loss and how it's very toxic as a culture. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense for her to have to confront herself at the end and apologize. Yeah, exactly. Because like, that's, that's it. Like she made it to the end. And then also, I mean, she never really brought up her daughter again. But obviously, that question no. from her daughter did have an impact on her because she she couldn't even respond to her. I don't think she wanted her daughter to go through the same thing that she did. And, you know, her sisters. And also, I don't know if we said mm-hmm. it, but um, the main character's mother was the same way. Like she was so strict on her diet. So they all kind of grew up in this very like toxic mentality of how they should look. And so I think that's why she was apologizing, because she realized that this, you know, what she wanted wasn't really what she needed or what made her happy. Yep. Because she sounded so alone, oh, too. It sucks that she realized it so late. Mm-hmm. But that is like... I mean, that's true for a lot of situations that women deal with when it comes to weight. Yeah, but also eating disorders. Also, like the doctor said, like after you do this, you can't go back. You can't undo it. So Mm -hmm. like, you know, there was nothing she could have done anyway. I wish uh, uh, it sucks. It's so sad. (laughs) And then it did mention that her daughter and the daughter, I think the daughter had a wife, right? And then the their child would visit annually. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering like how often, like, like when did that annual visit start? Because sometimes I think that moments like that almost makes you miss your family more. Cause you're like, wow, this is so yeah, fun, because- but damn, I don't see you that often. And the fact that it's annually, it kind of feels like a, Okay, this is my obligation that I have to fill. But to the mom, that probably means the world yeah. that she's even coming. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that just made her feel even more lonely. Mm-hmm. But this story, like, damn. damn. Think, the story was good. I think this was my favorite one out of the, all the ones that we read. Yeah, I I think I would agree with you. This one, I think this one definitely left the most impact on me, especially because... Um, we've also dealt with people who try to, you know, force us to lose weight or whatever. You know what I mean? We don't have to get into that, yep. but I feel like it was just, re- <laughs> no, I get what you mean. It was just relatable. And I think it's, it is relatable. And I think it's, um, this whole anthology, it's kind of nice stepping back because I was so into the idea of finishing this mm-hmm. before we filmed. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice stepping back and like seeing it in a different light. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. It's like, damn, it's very, it's so well written, but at the same time, it's, it's like a bitter feeling of like, wow, that's just how life is right now. Yeah. Mostly now. I feel like with, with social media being so big, Mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to break away from trying to look a certain way. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I feel like it's not as prevalent now, but, but I know that a lot of the time celebrities will still try to sell like those teas that'll make you lose weight Mm -hmm. this is so weird that we're that i mentioned this because i was just talking to my coworkers about like herbalife (laughs) and they were just like damn isn't it so weird that it was just like like it was just everywhere like Mm -hmm. like celebrities will just like endorse this like no care in the world yeah it was and it's it's crazy that although it's not as big anymore 
to do that type of stuff. I feel like because of how quick people can become popular now, Mm -hmm. although it's not mentioned, everyone who becomes popular fits the same mold. Yes. Everyone looks the same. Oh my God, yes. Same hair, same skin, same everything, same body shape. And it's like, that's just a more subtle way of doing what's always been done, which is manipulating women to look a certain way because they feel like they have to. Yeah. Like, you need to look this way in order to be loved by the majority of the internet, which honestly, like, at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. You could just turn off Mm -hmm. your phone. Like, it's fine. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that they still don't try to sell, like, teas like that. I'm sure they do. I just haven't really been paying attention. Um, But, yeah, it's just crazy to see how, like Chelly said, this is still prevalent in the way that these are the girls that become really popular is they have to look a certain way. And even if like someone who was bigger becomes popular, it's not like it's an easy thing. I feel like they're always dealt with so much hate that it's so sad. Yeah. Cause they, it, it's kind of funny that you remember Penelope from Bridgerton. Oh my God. She's yeah. They just announced or just showed those stills from the next season. And oh my gosh, people are that. like saying how people unnecessarily hate her. But then there's mm-hmm. other, other people who are like, well, I mean, don't forget what happened on that last episode. I don't know. But yes, but I do remember. It's crazy because I do remember when she got big, she hated that people called her a plus size queen. You remember that? Yeah, I think I told you about that, didn't I? Yeah, that's so... It's. I feel a certain way about that because I, I get where she's coming from, mm-hmm. but it also comes with like being the face of like something that's so popular media today. Mm-hmm. People will just say things like that. And it's because it, isn't it weird for someone to like refer to you as the size of your body? It definitely like, is. That's weird. Just, <laughs> it, but for some reason, people think it's OK when it's like plus size. It's mm-hmm. Like, yeah, plus size queen. It's like, yeah, please don't say that. Like, mm-hmm. don't. Don't say that. And I and I get it. It might not affect everyone, but that's it's weird that we're in that type of society where we say that to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, So she was becoming popular. I think it was after season two, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. And obviously, like her fans would make comments about her body. But I think the ones that she was talking about was the ones that were more favorable, which were like, oh, my God, love that you're a plus size like good representation or or whatever stuff like that and she came out with a statement pretty much stating that she didn't want to be like i guess the the lead of the plus size community i guess i don't know and Mm -hmm. so she was upset by that but she's not the only one who's been upset by comments like that i think there was someone another celebrity who was really big who also said like i know that you guys mean well maybe possibly but it doesn't feel good it doesn't it does not oh god like i know we're not that big but there was this one time we got one comment where someone kind of framed it as if it was about to be an insult but then they were like but you're so beautiful and i was like wait what who are you talking about i like i don't know it's it's a very specific like you have to be plus size to get it but there's like certain compliments that you can get that are like oh my gosh, I looked at you and I was sh- so shocked. I'm just so amazed by how beautiful you are. And it's like, okay, but why did you have to bring up the shocked part? Like, why did, why was Wait. that? It's like, you're, this, yeah. And it's like, you're trying to make yourself feel good. Like into this, like, oh my gosh, I'm so amazing for giving a person a like this a compliment like that. Or or those compliments yeah. where it's like, oh, you're so brave to like just yeah. be so comfortable oh with your God. body. It's like, what the fuck? How do you not see that yeah. that's very like backhanded? I, I don't know. People, I feel like to, to some people, it kind of feels like charity. Like, oh, you know, they don't get a lot of compliments. So I'm going to be the nice one and give them one. Yeah. And then it's like, dude, shut up. And then on a similar vein when people would say like you're so pretty for a black girl it's like what what the fuck Mm -hmm. like what do you mean (laughs) like those comments 
are so unnecessary. Do you remember when that audio was going around? The people in my DM say I'm pretty. Yeah. Um. Apparently, that audio comes from a, a slam poetry, I, I believe. Fix me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, the whole point of it was the woman who was reading it is a black woman. And she was talking about how only at night would people go on to her DMs and tell her she's pretty, wow. but never to her face. Oh, my God. That is so... That is so sad. Yeah, and that's why people were super angry that people were using that audio because it's like you don't understand the context, the message behind it. You're you are using this audio, and she is still not being seen. Aww. Like it's it's so like y- there's no point in you using this audio if you don't understand the story behind it, and it sucks. It like so sad. That is really sad. I didn't know about that. Dang, I feel like we could talk about this forever. <laughs> I know, but seriously, like if. You guys pick up this anthology, Eight Bites. That's where it's at. But when Mm -hmm. I saw... Can we talk... Oh, go ahead. Let me just quickly say, when I saw that title, I thought it was going to be a spider. I don't know why. I don't know why. I was like... I did too. (laughs) I I was expecting that too. (laughs) But okay, what do you want to talk about? I did actually want to talk about the first story in the anthology. Okay. Because I feel like it starts off pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Um, the first story in this anthology is called The Husband Stitch. Mm-mm. And it reminded me of a story I read back in high school. Yeah, right? it, it is a retelling of it. Or I guess a reimagining of it. So it's the story about the girl who falls in love with her husband. And um, in this story, she wears a ribbon that she can never take off. And Mm -hmm. if you have read this story in the past, it follows the same thing of the girl in the scarf. And when her scarf comes off, her head also comes off. So, yeah, but in in the story, story, you don't know that. Like, she just always has this ribbon around her neck. And before her husband was her husband, he would still be like, oh, but can you, like, take this? I would almost, like, turn him on to, like, feel it. Like, he was like, let me take it off. Yeah. And she was like, no, like this is mine like this is it this doesn't pertain to you like this is mine and Mm -hmm. he would kind of let it go but he would obviously be like upset about it like a little bit i hated it same i hated it because he didn't care no like their sex first of all was so unfulfilling for her yeah she never she never got anything she ever wanted out of her sex life um, he felt like he was just kind of living for the moments and the vibes Mm -hmm. instead of actually to like make his partner happy Mm -hmm. and like you said he got turned on by the idea of this ribbon so sometimes when they would be together he would like lick the ribbon and it's like bitch i can't feel through the ribbon Mm -hmm. it's it's just my ribbon okay but he like even i think their marriage or their wedding night he had a moment where he really wanted to pull it off and it's like can you just not exist and live with the fact that i don't want you to touch this yeah And there was a point where he was like, well, you're not supposed to have secrets. You know, a marriage shouldn't have secrets. And she's like, it's not a secret. It just belongs to me. Like, it has nothing to do with Mm -hmm. you. There would also be moments where she would wake up and he would just be like holding the ribbon. And she would freeze because she would think like, oh, my God, he's going to take it off. But he didn't. But he would still like be like grabbing it. You know, like he'd just touch it whenever. And I hate it, too, because there was a moment where she found someone else who had a ribbon. And she yeah. was so like, like had a crush on this person, infatuated with her mm-hmm. and really wanted to get to know her. Mm-hmm. And as soon as she brought it up to her husband, she, it like soiled it for herself because he was just completely turned on by the idea of this other girl with a ribbon. Yeah. And it was like, that's it Which is so fucking weird. That's... And I think her ribbon was around her <sighs> ankle, right? Yes. And it's just so fucking weird. Like, the husband was so weird. Like, just that whole, like, him getting turned on by it and then getting aroused by, you know, the prospect of another girl with her with his wife. It's mm-hmm. like, what? What's wrong with you? Yeah, it was horrible. They end up having a, a son together who is born without a ribbon. Mm-hmm. And um, also, she has to... When she's in labor, after she's in labor... I fucking hated that moment with the husband and the doctor when the doctor was like, don't worry, I'll give her the extra stitch just for you. And the husband's like, oh, my God, they're just like giggling together. And and she's obviously out of it. Like, literally, I was so Mm -hmm. mad. (laughs) 
this book does such a good so job at like making me like feel a lot <laughs> you know what i mean like i was no, just yeah feeling. i was really angry too oh, but it sucked too because uh, or i i like what the writing did when you were upset because there was a point where it wanted to make you feel the emotion that the character had felt mm-hmm. so there was a, when she was holding her baby where the baby tried pulling the ribbon and she grabbed like a coin of pennies or like a, a can of pennies and shook it really loud mm-hmm. and then the baby looked at her at a certain in a certain way because it, he was scared and he was like okay i won't touch the ribbon but i think he but was then crying in parentheses, too no? yes but then in parentheses it was like if you want to experience this go grab a can of pennies and um go up to a friend and just shake it in their ear and look at the face they make at you and how they'll never look at you the same way again Mm -hmm. and it's like fuck yeah that's so that hurts because she has to live with this and sadly that's her reality that no one will ever no one is ever going to give her her boundaries Mm -hmm. of just not asking her about this thing yeah or wanting to touch it or whatever because even her son would like touch it sometimes but I think at a, at some point when her son was old enough, he kind of just like understood, he like, understood. okay, don't touch it, don't ask about it, whatever. It's your it thing. It was more the fact that even after living this whole life with her husband and her son and her son eventually moving out, her husband just never let it go. Yeah. Like, he just really, really wanted to know what would happen. Mm-hmm. And so then to the point or she, the main character ended up getting really lonely to the point where she was like, you want to pull my ribbon off? Fine pull it off pull it off and he doesn't even like you would think that he'd be like wait are you serious are you sure think about this no really 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 he's like really please babe really (laughs) he unties the ribbon and then her head falls off Mm -hmm. and i don't remember his reaction i think he was horrified i mean what did he expect (laughs) why (laughs) like ah god it makes me so angry that he's like oh my gosh how how could she not tell me? And it's like, yeah. yeah, you didn't have to know, and you didn't have to do any of this. Like you could have prevented. It was very preventable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was the fact that he just couldn't live with that curiosity. I I felt so upset for her because he would always be fucking tugging at that thing. Mm. Mm. And then even I think I think it was at the end where she thought to herself, "Well, he's not a bad." man you know he never like took it off without my permission i guess but still he was just so fucking annoying Mm -hmm. like i i don't like it because it's just like unsettling that he was always so concerned about it and then it would like fucking turn him on too like that's weird yeah that is weird I hated it. You're right. This book did really do a good job on me hating these men. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, oh God, they really be doing shit like that. Yeah. It's like, it's also a commentary on how women just can't have anything for themselves. Like men always want to come in and fucking, you know, just ruin everything. It's like, she can't have this one thing to mm-hmm. herself. Like it's, it wasn't doing anything. It was just there. Yep. It was just there. It wasn't hurting anyone, and she was super respectful about it. But yeah, she eventually died, and it was his fault. Mm-hmm. And there was also a point where, um, after the birth of her son or their son, she mentioned that she couldn't have any other kids, um, and that she thinks that her son mm-hmm. was just like a really bad tenant. <laughs> Not that she blamed him, but she just kind of <laughs> made like a comment, like, "Oh yeah, I couldn't house anybody yeah. else." Although we didn't talk about all the stories, all of them left a very strong impression. Yeah. So I do recommend that if you have not read this, go read it because they're all kind of like this Mm -hmm. in a way where you have to sit back and be like, well, that fucking sucks for them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. (sighs) But um, I think the only one that didn't really hit me was the heinous one, the especially heinous, because I think I think you have to have watched the show. No. Law and Order? Is that an actual... Oh, it's based on Law and Order. Yeah, it's based on Law and Order, but I've never seen it. Or if I have, it's only been like clips, really. So I didn't know what what was happening. I thought it was was based off of a fake show. Like, I thought it was the synopsis of a fake show. That's kind of how I took it. And then 
you basically see this person fall into insanity and the only person who is like trying to help them, they don't turn to them at the end and they turn to someone else. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I I don't really get the message of that one either. I feel like I have to go back and reread it. Same. The the format of it kind of exhausted me though. Same. Like I, I, it was in the format where I'm like, I could skip a few episodes. Like I don't need to read all of these, but then I'd be super confused. Yeah, I mean, some don't get me wrong. Some of the those episodes are really interesting, but overall, I was like, damn, this is. I don't know why it's so tiring to read everything. And it got so by episode weird. I don't know if you read it by the end but there were two other characters they introduced that had the same names as them Mm -hmm. but just like flipped and i was like what's happening (laughs) because it was benson henson stabler and abler Mm -hmm. it's like yeah the fuck i was confused (laughs) who are these people (laughs) who are these people But, (laughs) (laughs) but um oh my gosh i didn't think we would spend so much time talking about these stories I think they were really enjoyable, though. Like, overall, I think this is definitely a book that I would recommend. Um, mm-hmm. it, I, trigger warning, though, because, damn, some of these are yeah, very heavy. Lot. And it is unsettling because of how um, relatable it could be to people. So, yeah, like you said, trigger warning. I think overall, I would give this entire anthology maybe like a 3.5 out of 5. I would read it again. I think I have to sit down and read it again. Same. I agree with you. I'm literally in the same boat. I think 3.5 is good. Um, it's kind of how I'm feeling mm. about it right now. I think it's more enjoyable to, to talk about it with you, though. Like, it makes me appreciate the stories that same. we did talk about more. Yeah, same. So that means we got to come back way in the future te- <laughs> in our 10-year anniversary <laughs> and talk about the other three. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> i'll try to pencil it in we're so busy <laughs> we're <done. laughs> um <laughs> <I'm so fucked. laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for everyone who's listening to us in audio form whether that be spotify apple Podcasts, or amazon music or anywhere you get your podcasts on thank you so much um if you can leave a rating of five stars and a review because that makes a huge difference and um also just telling your friends family loved ones everyone about us because the best type of exposure is through word of mouth Mm -hmm. if you are watching us on youtube i know we're not caught up but hi hi you're there um (laughs) if you can like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell we do post every tuesday and thursday it is so good to be back it's weird it's weird i feel like this new sense of like energy in me (laughs) i feel now that we're back i feel alive i feel like my purpose is this i'm here i'm happy Mm -hmm. thriving (laughs) I know. And just like another thank you again for like people who like stuck around, even though we were really going through it. Yeah, seriously. Um, How else can they support us? Yeah, Well, if you want to just go above and beyond, we did make a Patreon, which we had so many plans for it. But for right now, it's just if you want to show your support a little bit more. um, You can find us on patreon.com slash book fix. Mm hmm. And if you want to follow us on social media, we do have a TikTok at the Book Fix Pod, T H E B O O K F I X P. Oh no. Hold on. <laughs> and if you want to follow us on social media, we do have a TikTok at the Book Fix, T H E B O O K F I X. And we also have an Instagram at the Book Fix Pod, T H E B O O K F I X P O D. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> I just feel tired after that one. <laughs> um, I know. I feel angry. <laughs> I'm going to go punch the wall, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Yahira and I are going to go scream at a wall. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. What wall are we screaming at? <laughs> um, okay. I pick my left. You pick your, your right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Let's start now. Ha <laughs>